Hello and welcome to the Emirates Society of Emergency Medicine Emergency Ultrasound Lecture Series. My name is Rasha Bumid and I'll be talking to you about ultrasound guided vascular access. This is the list of the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine practice guidelines for 2012 that includes a number of ultrasound guided vascular procedures in their guidelines. Today we will be focusing on discussing ultrasound guidance of internal jugular cannulation, which could also be applicable to femoral venous access. The objectives of this talk include to discuss the indications for ultrasound guided vascular access and what is the evidence behind it. We are going to talk about the procedure technique itself and mention some limitations and pitfalls. So why use ultrasound for vascular access? A number of studies have been conducted and showed that using ultrasound has a higher first insertion attempt success rate, higher overall success rate, reduces the procedure time, and there is less arterial puncture. Based on the Report of the American Society of Anesthesiologists Task Force on Central Venous Access. This is a level A1 evidence, which means clinician should follow a strong recommendation unless a clear or compelling rationale for an alternative approach. So there is very strong evidence based on very large randomized control trial that consistently showed that using real-time ultrasound for vascular access of the internal jugular vein has a higher first insertion attempt success rate, it reduces access time, higher overall success cannulation rate, and decreased rates of arterial puncture. Again, this is a level A1 evidence. There are two approaches that have been described for ultrasound guided vascular access. The static approach uses ultrasound to determine the vessel location and patency, assesses surrounding structures, and mark the location to provide optimum placement for needle introduction. After determining this location, the procedure is performed without real-time ultrasound. In a dynamic approach, the procedure is performed using real-time ultrasound observation of the needle, entry, and placement. The static approach has advantages over a completely landmark guided procedure. However, the dynamic approach allows for real-time visualization of the needle to placement and has been shown to be superior to the static approach in most situations. In the rest of this presentation, we will be talking about the dynamic approach. The dynamic approach using a basic B mode imaging. The plane of ultrasound image may be oriented relative to the vessel in a short axis or out of plane or a long axis which is in plane. So we'll start with describing the in plane or long axis. In the long axis view, the image plane is parallel to the course of the vessel. The image should show the course of the vessel across the screen and the shaft and the point of the needle as they advance. Although it may be more difficult to keep the needle and the structure of interest in view, the long access view is more advantageous because it shows the entire needle including the tip. When performing the out-of-plane or short-axis short view, the image plane is perpendicular to the course of the vessel and to the needle. The vessel should appear as an echoic circle on the screen, with the needle visualized as a hyperechoic point in a cross-section. Although the visualized portion of the needle is centered in the lumen, the disadvantage of the short axis is that the plane of ultrasound may cut through the needle shaft proximally, underestimating the depth of the tip. 
In this slide, we will be comparing between the in-plane and out-of-plane approaches. In an in-plane approach, it's a steep learning curve because the beam of the ultrasound is thin as a credit card. Hampered by the skin folds or bony prominence, and tracking the needle tip is easy because there's no probe motion and confirmation is immediate. However, in out of plane, it's easier hand eye coordination. It has better lateral field of view. Both the vessels are seen. Needle tip can be difficult to locate, and there is higher risk of through and through vein puncture. So here we can summarize both the advantages and disadvantages of using one approach versus the other. In the next few slides, we will be describing the procedure itself. And this is summarized by the five P's. You pre-scan, you prepare the patient and the equipment, you position the patient, place the probe in a serial sheet, and finally proceed with the needle guidance. So you will use a high frequency probe for vascular access. The high frequency generates high resolution pictures and the linear image display makes needle guidance and identification somewhat more intuitive. Before site preparation for puncture, ultrasound should be used to choose the optimal site for access. The choice of site should include factors such as the vessel size, depth, course, surrounding structure, and adjacent pathology, such as overlying cellulitis. The vessel should be assessed for patency, course, and other anatomical issues such as vein valves. Although the ultrasound will allow direct visualization of the vessel, optimizing the anatomy before the procedure is extremely important for an inexperienced operators. In venous access, it is extremely important, particularly in central access procedures, to choose an angle of needle approach that will avoid the artery if the needle penetrates the posterior wall. This can be aided by appropriate patient positioning. Another important thing is to differentiate between a vein and an artery. As tubular fluid filled vessels, arteries and veins have a similar appearance on a grayscale ultrasound image. Both typically have an anechoic black lumen. However, arteries have thicker walls that are slightly more hyperechoic or brighter than the walls of the vein. Arteries are less compressible than veins but both are compressible with enough pressure. Veins tend to be larger, teardrop shaped, and easily compressible. Peripheral arteries are more easily compressible than central arteries, but central arteries may be fairly easily compressible in a hypotensive patient. The ability to compress the venous wall with relatively minimal pressure is a useful way to distinguish a vein from an artery. If there's any doubt that a, a vessel may be arterial, the vessel should be imaged in short access and enough pressure applied to slightly deform the vessel. And it should be observed for several seconds to determine whether there, there is arterial pulsation. In this video, it's demonstrated the difference between the vein and the artery. You can see the vein that is ovid shaped, that is easily compressible, while the artery with the maximum pressure, at the end you can see these pulsation confirming that it is not a compressible artery. This is an example of why pre-scanning is extremely important. In this video, you can see an example of a non-compressible clot filled internal jugular vein. So this is definitely not an optimal site 
to insert your vascular access. When performing vascular access using ultrasound guidance, it is important to align the orientation of the probe with the landmark on the screen. Note the location of the probe marker. The probe marker and the screen marker should be pointing in the same direction. Probe marker should correspond to the left side of the operator, not necessarily to the left side of the patient, and the left side of the ultrasound image on the screen. This way, if the needle moves to the left of the probe, it will also move to the left side of the screen. For an in-plane approach, most operators hold the probe marker toward themselves, so the needle will be visualized coming in the left side of the screen. Remember, when you pre-scan, you should try and optimize the image, specifically optimizing the depth of the vein and the access. You want to keep it, the vessel in the middle of the screen where there is the best resolution for you to be able to visualize the needle. After pre-scanning, the next step is to prepare the patient and the equipment. You will position your patient like you normally do for a central access. And the central line kit will normally include all of the equipments you need for the procedure itself. Except two things, obviously the ultrasound machine, as well as a sterile ultrasound probe cover. So make sure you bring both of these along with your ultrasound or the central line kit. Next is positioning the machine. You would position the patient like you would normally for the procedure. The ultrasound machine should be placed immediately next to the patient and so you can visualize the relevant patient anatomy and the ultrasound image at the same time. The operator will therefore be facing both the patient and the ultrasound machine. In the setting of an IJ, you will be at the head of the bed, while in the femoral line, you will be opposite the machine. This is an example of how not to place your ultrasound machine. If you see that the operator is looking at the ultrasound image, but not looking at the patient, and that can lead to fatal mistakes. Therefore, it's appropriate to position your machine in a place where you actually can see the patient as well as the ultrasound screen. So far, we pre-scanned, prepared the patient and the equipment, and positioned the machine as well as the patient. Next is placing a sterile sheet. There are specific sterile probe cover kits that are available and these should be placed on a sterile field. Or if you don't have these kits, you can use a sterile glove instead. A non-sterile assistant should hold the probe upright and apply standard non-sterile gel on the transducer. The probe is then inserted into the sterile sheet and placed on the sterile field. A sterile gel from the silver lubricant package can then be placed on the sterile glove on top of the probe. The next step is to proceed with needle guidance. In an out-of-plane or transverse access view, center the cross-section of the vein on the screen. One simple way to assess the proper distance from the transducer is to use the Pythagorean theory. As shown in the figure, measure the depth from the surface to the vessel. This is equal to the distance from the transducer to where the skin puncture should be made. As long as the needle 
enters the skin at a 45 degree angle. When a more shallow angle is desired, the distance from the transducer must be increased. For a 45 degree approach, the target, which is the vessel here, is roughly 1.4 times the depth of the vessel. Thus, if the vessel is centered one centimeter beneath the skin, puncture the skin one centimeter toward the operator from the transducer, and the vein will be punctured by 1.4 centimeter of the needle depth. It is useful to make this calculation before attempting cannulation to avoid complication. If the needle is at a distance and the vessel has not been cannulated, then the trajectory is not correct and the needle should be repositioned before injuring deeper structure such as the carotid or femoral artery. A steeper angle of approach may require a site of entry closer to the probe, while an angle more parallel to the skin would be further away. In the short axis approach, center the cross section of the vein on the screen. The needle is only visible at the point where it crosses the ultrasound plane perpendicular to it. The needle will be seen as a dot, often either as a faint shadow, which is black, or reverberation artifact, which is white, deep to the needle. Note that the appearance of the needle tip and the needle shaft will be identical on an ultrasound. The cross section of line is a dot no matter which part of the line is cut by the ultrasound beam. In a transverse view, in order to ensure that you actually are, are following the tip of the needle and not the shaft, the tip of the needle is the area where the dot is just barely visible. Moving the probe slightly should cause the dot to disappear. If you are at the tip, if you're visualizing the shaft, the dot will be visible in either direction. Since one great weakness of the short axis approach is visualizing the tip of the needle, it is important that the operator becomes comfortable with the concept of ensuring that they can see the tip of the needle by moving the ultrasound plane appropriately. So in this demonstration, once again, in a short axis view, you will see that you will need to move the probe along with moving the needle to ensure that you actually follow the tip rather than the shaft of the needle. This is an example of a short axis view. As the needle approaches the vessel, the wall of the vessel will tint downward and then pop back when the wall is punctured. The needle cross-section is visualized as a bright point with some reverberation artifact. After the vein is punctured, a flash should be seen in the syringe, and the tip of the needle should be visible within the vessel. In an in-plane approach, Center the long axis of the vein on the screen. To ensure that you are in the center, focus on the largest diameter of the vessel. Hold the needle in line with the trajectory of the vessel, which should be in the same plane as the ultrasound beam. With this technique, it is important to keep the transducer steady over the center of the vessel, and therefore you will be able to visualize the needle going into the vessel without even moving the probe. This is the biggest advantage of an in-plane compared to out-of-plane approach. When visualizing the long axis of a needle and vessel, the entire length of the needle, including the tip, can be visualized. For the novice users, it is very challenging to keep the ultrasound probe in an alignment with the vessel. In this view, the ultrasound probe is not parallel to the vessel and therefore the vein is not well visualized. 
Redirect the probe so you can see the entire trajectory of the needle and the vessel. If the needle is misdirected out of plane, seen as losing the image of the needle, the needle should be withdrawn toward the skin and redirected. Do not redirect the ultrasound beam to find the needle. Instead, redirect the needle itself. Many authors advocate the use of ultrasound to confirm venous cannulation after the flash is obtained, and the guide wire can be visualized within the lumen. And in this video, you can see the guide wires being fed in the vessel. When you start performing ultrasound guided vascular access, it may be helpful to start the procedure with a short access view because that is easier for most of the um, sonographers to ensure that the needle is centered over the middle of the vessel. And then you can rotate the probe to a long access or an in-plane view as the needle is advanced and then you can confirm that the needle is within the vessel itself. That could be a safer approach to start with. Once you feel more comfortable with a long access view, you can go ahead and just do the long access. Some important tips. The needle in bevel down positions are better visualized. The hand holding the probe must be anchored to the skin in order to make sure you're stable. And minimize probe pressure to avoid collapsing the veins. In summary, a dynamic approach of ultrasound guided vascular access has been proven to be safer, more efficient, increases the success rate and decreases the complications of a procedure. This is based on multiple randomized controlled trial and therefore a level 1A category recommendation. Therefore, there's no excuse for providers not to learn this valuable procedure. Using the dynamic ultrasound, there are two different approaches. There's an in-plane or long access, an out-of-plane and transverse access. Keep practicing, that's the only way of how you'll, you'll become efficient and comfortable. Thank you and enjoy ultrasounding.